So these are the green tomatoes that I saved out of the garden when the cows got in and destroyed it. We ended up with a five gallon, a five and a half gallon bucket full of tomatoes. And instead of making relish, I'm running kind of close to time, out of time, and I have decided to make, um, slice these for fried green tomatoes, and I'm gonna can these so that I can reuse them, or so that I can use them when it comes time. And they're really pretty tomatoes. So this is what I'm doing today. They've all been washed. And we will get them all prepared and I'll bring you back when I go to the next phase. But I'm cutting them kind of thick, as you can see. So they're, they're, they're not too thin, but they're gonna make really, really good fried green tomatoes. I've already made some green, uh, some not green relish. I've made some um, green pickles out of the last batch that the cows messed up. So needless to say, the garden is gone. Luckily, I still have some containers that have some yellow tomatoes. But aren't those pretty? I mean, really. And um, so I will get everything cut up and get this ready for my canning process. They really, if they would have gotten ripe, it would have been so nice. So nice. So uh, I missed out on that this year. But all is not lost. We still have one of our favorites, which is going to be fried green tomatoes. So let me get all that done, and then I will bring you back. Okay, as I was saying, I am preparing these for fried green tomatoes. And y'all, I have to apologize. I have purple on my hands. I have been out foraging wild black elderberries this morning, and that juice will take a little bit for it to come off because I, I can't wear gloves when I'm picking because I, I the elderberries are, they're just so tiny and I feel like I have more control with a bare hand. So I do get it all over me. So aren't those pretty? But I've got the ones I'm keeping there and I have my scraps for the animals and I also have a bucket full there. That is a huge bucket. So I'm going to cut up these, get them ready. Uh, I try to have as little waste as I can, but these are kind of odd shaped. They're just a little bit odd shaped. Um, so, I, I need to make sure they're a good size for battering and fitting flat in the pan when I do the fried green tomatoes. And they, I mean, I'm not disappointed that they're so pretty. I'm disappointed that I didn't get any more than I did because they would have, they would have continued putting on fruit. We just, we just got started with the season when the cow decided to take over. So, there's a little spot there on that one. It won't hurt it, I'll just get rid of that little spot. And we'll go from there. So, let me get some of these done because it's gonna take me quite a while. There's so many in here. Like I said, it's five and a half 
gallon bucket plus a half a gallon in another bucket plus we got some we got some cucumbers and I don't know if you can see those so we did we did get some cucumbers so I'll be able to use those I've got enough to do a couple of jars of cucumbers also So also, when our yellow bell tomatoes are ready, and when I was growing up, they were called, we called them yellow pear tomatoes because they were shape of pear as far as we knew. So I, when those are ripe, we will do some relish mostly with those because they're so small besides eating them fresh. Uh, we may do some chutney. Um, we may do some pickling, so we'll just we'll just kind of experiment. This is the first time I've ever actually raised the yellow ones as an adult, so I'm kind of anxious. I have them in several containers, and I'm just waiting for them to. They just now started blooming, so and I have those at the house. The cows haven't seen those. And I would also welcome any comments, any recipes that you have to share. Um, I'm willing to try anything different. So just give me a little comment and I'll share a recipe for me. Um, I have plenty of these to go along and I will, I will just, you know, I'll try just about anything. You know, the green tomatoes are actually kind of tough. So I, I hope I'm not making anybody nervous with, <laughs> with the knife so close to my fingers, but I don't have a slicer. So this is the best I can do at the moment. I know a slicer would make more perfect, but who really cares when you're cooking them up and you just care about the taste? So. This is what I'm going to do. I keep forgetting to take this little center out 
and it does make it harder at the end, so I'm gonna try to pay attention. And y'all at the end, I will show you what the garden space now looks like. My husband took it over and the cows had pretty much destroyed it. And this is one of my largest tomatoes. Fills up my hand. Look at that. <laughs> it is very large. I can't promise that this one will not be eaten tonight fried green tomatoes. Now what I have done is I have squeezed a little lemon juice on these and I have placed them all in the dehydrator so we will see how it works out at the end. Okay so now I have all of my tomatoes in the dehydrator. I only squeezed a little lemon juice and these I canned. And then uh, here's how they turned out um, after the dehydrator was done. So they turned out very nicely. I didn't make them brittle, I only made them soft. Okay, today we are making radish chips and some green beans. We're gonna dehydrate these and there's some uh, very thinly sliced tomatoes also. So this is going to be a snack. And first of all, I'm gonna sprinkle some olive oil on there and get that kind of mixed up. I'm gonna good. take these little tongs and mix them up or I'll have this oil all over my hands, which sometimes I do anyway. But, so we're gonna dehydrate these and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of lemon juice on there to keep those tomatoes from turning brown if I can help it or black maybe. But these are very thin and I wanna I wanna go ahead and sprinkle that lemon juice on there. And I've sliced the lemon and I'm just gonna squeeze it on there. Seeds and all. The seeds aren't going to go in the dehydrator, so I'm not worried about that. Now give that a little, a little kick. And I have some Pioneer Woman Tex-Mex Cowgirl Seasoning. That was a gift from my sister. And I'm going to sprinkle a little of that on there. Not a whole lot. And a little bit of sea salt. And then I'm gonna stir that up again, and I may have to use my hands. Um, Cause I don't wanna tear up these tomatoes. But um, I wanna get that in there. So just mix it all up real good. Put it on your dehydrator. And as, oh, I want them chips now. So I want them really crispy. I don't want them just rubbery. I want them crispy so that we can just eat them uh, just like that. But I've had roasted radishes and they are really yummy. I don't think I'll eat a raw one again because I love them roasted. And I'm gonna try them dehydrated with a little seasoning as a snack. So we will get this stirred up really good and then I'll get them on the dehydrator trays and We'll get them in the dehydrator and see how long it takes to get them um, nice and crispy. So as you can see, they're pretty they're pretty thin. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in just a few moments. Okay, so we got them all ready. Y'all, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not and share. Uh, we love your comments. And here they are at the end. Don't they look yummy? So they're ready for a snack.
Okay, this was a gift from our neighbor, Mr. Willie. He brought us some very small, tiny ears of corn. I did cut them off of the cob uh, for, I was gonna freeze them uh, or cream them. They turned out really nice. And I also uh, can, you know, I can fry them up or I can put them in green beans or, so the pigs will get that. And he also brought us a little mess of, uh, what is that? Okra. <laughs> and I only had one that was a little too tough. There it is. So we will put that in the pig's slop bucket too. And also he brought us some really nice bell peppers. So we will cut those up also. I did take some of the corn and I put a little butter and salt and pepper. We had Mexican food tonight and it was perfect. Here are some of the tomatoes that he gave us and I did salsa with these tomatoes. Uh, they had some bad spots. I cut those off and cut them all up and it made beautiful salsa. And these are the first pick, uh, tomatoes that were destroyed in the garden. And I made green tomato pickles out of these. I once had them in a restaurant, in a fish restaurant in Oklahoma. They were delicious. And this is the little package that I used for those pickles. Zesty bread and butter pickles. So uh, they should be really tasty. And I used a little bit of uh, canning salt. There's my jars, getting ready to put my jars in there. And this is my brine, and I cut up Vidalia onions. There's nothing like a Georgia Vidalia onion. And I'm going to put them in the bottom of the jar. I also may put some garlic, it's little pieces of garlic. And this is what the rest of my ingredients for the salsa. Plus I have some cucumbers. I decided not to use that salsa mix. I went ahead with my brother's recipe, which I knew very well. And here is the pickles in the jars. This is our zesty pickles. <laughs> 